Susan Hamer, and I am the Director of Nursing Learning and Organisational Development at National Institute of Health Services Research. And Becky has invited me to talk to you guys about some of my experiences of being an Executive Director of a large managed network. Hopefully with the idea of getting you to think about some things or to maybe gain some confidence to experiment. So we are a funder and we distribute about £300 million worth of funding annually. And we were asked to think about how we might do that. And any time you start talking about research, then it's complicated, it's messy, and you've somehow got to deal with the geography of the NHS. So we chose an organisational form, which is mapping onto the Academic Health Science Networks, but essentially we have 15 local networks and they're coordinated by a single centre. However, we are a national organisation, so those 15 organisations are not 15 separate organisations, they are 15 local organisations that network and relate to us. So when people start to talk about the challenges of a managed network, then inevitably you get the obvious tension between the authority that is the centre and then how you get engagement and networking locally. And we were no different. We were set the same challenge and the same uh, dilemmas. And we're now three years into our new network. And there was an expectation like everywhere else of some efficiencies associated with that. So some of the challenges for us as an executive team is how do you stay accountable? And also, how do you get the best and the vibrancy that is associated with a network? So what we've had as a frequent conversation is how do we manage as much as we can from a, an assurance framework rather than a very prescriptive framework? And we do that by negotiating and di discussing with our network an annual contract, which they then administer in their local patches. And that's done as a very iterative shared process. So hopefully no surprises, but probably has led to us moving quicker and faster because it is a negotiated contract with everyone having something to say and something to develop it. And then we subsequently agree a, a sort of overarching of that with the Department of Health. So the sort of day-to-day -day management is done through uh, a contract and then people assure us that key elements of the contract are in place. Now, one of the ways you can assure yourself, rather than having lots of projected, detailed performance meetings, is to make sure that you've got the right information systems in place, so that if at any point in time you are worried about an element, centrally about some element, that you can look into your information systems real time, wherever they are in the network. And we're getting closer and closer to that as a point. And we've had uh, put in place things where that enables us to do that. So that means that we can focus much more on the engagement activities of our network. And this is an area, again, where we've invested quite heavily, particularly in technology. So we're a web-based organisation, and we've seen our travel costs dramatically reduce as people have got more and more confident about using, in our case, a Google platform for networking, for meeting, and we treat our communities, particularly our key leadership communities, with a, a great deal of awareness. We make sure there's opportunities for them to network both virtually and in real time and put a lot of effort into thinking about what are the leadership skills that they need and what are the leadership beha behaviours that they want. So we have a constant um, range of leadership development activities that ensure that our leaders uh, constantly thinking about what does it lead, mean to lead in a network, but also what does it mean to lead across boundaries. And that's at all levels of our organisation. So we have strategic leadership summits, but we also have investment in our frontline leaders so that it creates for us as a funder a really soft landing of leadership behaviours that we would wish to see in an active network. So I think some of the benefits that we're starting to see after that sort of two years of concentrated investment is uh, certainly more innovation, more sharing, and, and a much more agile. Clearly, in the environment that we work with, um, we don't absolutely know what's coming down the pipeline, so we need a workforce that's, that's very can-do, that 
actually can cope with ambiguity and that we certainly have much more of a leadership culture which is about can do. I don't always need to know because I'm confident about the core skill set that we have. I think the other thing that I would say is that often people see networks as potentially a slow way of doing business or you must get consensus and I think actually no you don't. What you need is uh, enough leadership and enough committed leadership to make decisions. So I think one of the enabling our leaders or encouraging or indeed um, uh, recruiting leaders who are confident about being decisive is actually uh, a more uh, useful skill in a network than actually, oh, well, we need to take soundings from everyone. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's not an imposition. Uh, we don't not consult on things. In fact, we work hard on having uh, very rigorous uh, uh, consultations, but we only do it when we need to, and we're very purposeful about the nature of consultation that we get into. I suspect my time is just about up, uh, and me Becky told me not to talk for too long, but you can see I'm quite passionate. Um, as a leader, as a strategic leader, this is the first time that I have led in a network and not in a, um, in a hierarchical organisation. I guess as a clinical professional, I've always uh, understood the need to influence and influence sometimes without um, a, a authority over budgets. I think those have been very useful skills for me. But I think what particularly uh, has worked um, or has been one of the benefits uh, of working in, a, in a, a large networked way is that ability to move faster, to share learning, um, and to be, I think, much more pacey. So I think we've got an organisation whose form responds much more uh, to the ask of the business. So trying to get your organisational form to match what it is you're trying to achieve is really, really critical. And it, you have to le learn new skills. So certainly my uh, information and digital competence has massively improved. That's why I'm talking to you now. But it's also about being confident about and modelling that confidence about, no, this is how we do business. So if, just my final anecdote, if you had first seen how the executive director team embraced doing their Friday morning catch-up meetings using Google, it was not an all-inspiring sight. It was pretty clunky and horrible at first. And we all complained bitterly about it. But a few months on, none of us would have gone back to the old way and that ability to communicate in real time or easily, no matter where we are in the country, has really benefited. But not just us, our entire organisation is able to do that. So yes, it's about the people, it's about the attitudes, but also it's about commitment to having the right technology to support it. So hopefully that'll give you something to think about and talk about and uh, Becky knows where to find me. Thank you.